It's all over your face Written in the brightest red You think that I'm to blame You say sorry And I'm okay I'll keep this in my pocket Until another day we Hi, you. Welcome to our show. How are you? Hi, Adino. I'm good. Thank All you right. for having me. 
All right. So you just played for us your song "It's Fine," which you released last year in 2023, correct? Yes. And that song has um, it's gone over and had over a million streams on Spotify alone. How how did that happen? Um, I think for "It's Fine," it actually kind of blew up on TikTok before I released it. Actually. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes when I'm like procrastinating you know I like I'll go to my piano then mm. I'll like record a few videos and I'm like oh this this kind of nice then I'll post on TikTok and sometimes like like they will sometimes they gain some traction and it's fine it's one of the songs that did was that. it a full song was it just a snippet of the chorus or it was just the chorus just the chorus and people yeah. just picked up on it and then yeah I think a lot of people found it relatable because the song is about um, about ignoring your partner's red flags. Yeah. Right. Okay. Are you surprised by how well it translated on, on Spotify, on streaming services, after you recorded the full version of the song? Yeah. Like, um, I'm very fortunate to work with a bunch of my friends at PK who produce my music. PK Records. No, PK your Records. record company. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to Daniel who arranged the music for It's Fine. So actually when I first wrote it and when I put it onto TikTok, it was it had more of a ballad feel. Mm. But then one of my friends, um, Nick, he had the idea of turning it into a kind of city pop, like making it have a city pop vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was actually quite different from how I first imagined it. How did you imagine it initially? Uh, when I wrote it, it was... Sounding a lot like maybe a Chinese ballad. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. The chords are very Mendel pop, very I JJ see. Lin. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. All right. So when you look at your streaming data from Spotify, right, out of these millions of people who listen to the song, where are your listeners from? Um, they're mostly from the US, some from the Philippines. Indonesia, yeah. All right. So tell us about that song. Um, you mentioned it's about red flags, ignoring red, f- red flags. Tell us more about, about that song, you know, what what the creative and recording process was like for you. So for this song, okay, so usually when I write my music, mm. I start off with the chords or the melody. And this melody actually came to me when I was queuing up at Old Chunky. Old Chunky. Yeah. Then I was local. buying like meatballs, maybe the cheese one. And then, yeah, the melody came to me. I was like, ooh, I really like this. So I recorded it down to my phone. And then mm. once I got home, I went to the piano and I started writing. Yeah. Is that how you normally write on the piano? Yeah. Mm. All right. And... Yeah, and I was deciding which song to do next at that point because I had two songs out already. And then I posted this. And I remember Ian, he's one of my producers. And he replied to my story. He was like, let's do this one. Then I was like, okay, let's do this one. <laughs> so you had the, with the lyrics or was it just the melody that you posted initially? With the lyrics. With the lyrics. Yeah. The lyrics came at Old Chunky as well or was it just the melody? No, so... Yeah, nothing to do with Old Chunky. <laughs> Uh, it was just the melody at Old okay. Chunky. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so when I was, usually I write the melody or the chords first, and then when I have that, then I start putting in the words. Okay. Yeah. Right. You've been called Singapore's version of, of popular Icelandic singer Levey. Ooh. What are your <laughs> thoughts on that? It's such a huge compliment because I love Levey. I've been listening to her songs since like two three years ago mm-hmm. yeah when she first started blowing up on TikTok and I love her music and I think some people maybe say that because we both have a kind of deep timbre when we mm. sing yep. yeah and a bit of that jazzy inflections in, uh, uh, in your music yeah so maybe that's why but yeah it's a really huge compliment and when people say that I'm just like whoa <laughs> thank you I, I heard that she reached out to you on TikTok or she connected with you on TikTok as well? Uh, no, she did repost one of my videos. She reposted your videos? Yeah, wow. and she commented. because I mean, it was her song. Mm. Yeah. All right. Did you DM her or anything? No, I didn't. But I freaked out when I saw it. <laughs> and I also understand that you started writing songs 
when you were just four years old. And now you just turned 20, right? Yeah. Which means what you've been writing for 16 years now already? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, tell us how you, what happened. Do you, re- do you have any recollection? Like what happened when you were four years old? How do you end up making up your own songs? I started writing, I started doing music because of my mom actually because she was a stay-at-home mom so she taught me and my sister everything like even the cats and my mom she plays the even the cats a cats like academics oh right I thought <laughs> you mean cats okay. yeah and so my mom she plays the piano mm-hmm. and my dad actually sings so since young um, uh, uh, were they professional musician singers or were they hobbyists or? Um, when they were students they would perform at those what? Chinese pubs Right, yeah, in yeah. Singapore. Yeah, yeah, they had oh. like Ai Ting Hai, all those. But I think they're, most of them have closed down, actually. Okay. Yeah. My mom still plays um, professionally. She has gigs at like hotels. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Right. But yeah, my mom taught me music and mm-hmm. she started... Um, um, she started introducing us to songwriting by... Like she would like notate down the start of a phrase and then she would have us sit there and write the rest of it. Yeah. At four years old? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So you started with lyrics? Uh, no, no, like uh, melodies. Uh, melodies, yeah. okay. And then you, you'll come up with your own melodies. Yeah, and I remember when I was young, I'll be out with my family, and then a melody would come to my head, mm. and then I'll grab my mom's I don't know, iPhone 3 at that time, mm. yeah, and then I'll record it into her voice the memos. Voice yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. Did you take music lessons? You can play piano, right? So at, at what point did you start taking music lessons? Um, my mom actually taught me music. Oh, your mom taught yeah, you? Yeah, so she taught me piano and she sent um, my sister and me for exams like Yamaha, EVRSM. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What age did you, did you start playing piano? Uh, maybe when I was four. Mm, around the same time that you started yeah. writing songs. Yeah. And... Uh, but I also took vocal lessons when I entered SOTA at, when I was 13. Yeah, but that was for classical training because oh. that's what SOTA had. So that's fairly recent compared to songwriting. So were you not singing before that? Did you not try out singing or, or go for vocal lessons before that? Uh, I did sing, but it was mostly shouting probably. Cause mm, like untrained. <laughs> yeah, raw. I don't have the right techniques or anything. Okay. Yeah. So was it in SOTA? You went to SOTA. How old were you when, when you enrolled in SOTA? 13. 13 until? Until 18. 18. So was that where you developed your voice? You know, like you said, that that very distinctive uh, voice that you're using for, for singing? Um, in SOTA, because I did classical training for mm-hmm. voice, um, I developed a lot of my head voice, my upper register, which I never really touched before. Mm. I remember when I was first starting out, it sounded like, it was kind of like, because there wasn't much sound. Mm. But my vocal coach, um, DJ Leslie, he helped me develop my head voice. Mm. And then from there, because I still did a lot of pop singing outside of Soda. Mm. So I started to integrate the techniques I learned in my some voice lessons in SOTA into mm-hmm. the way I sang pop, which helped me develop my mix register. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about your pop music taste. How did it develop? You know, what were you listening to when you were a kid? You know, and then and how did it progress? Ooh, I listened to when I was really young, my parents started introducing me to a lot of Chinese songs. Okay. So I love which kind of artists was it? Uh a lot of very popular artists like Ame, Ame, okay. JJ Lin, J mm-hmm. Cho, mm-hmm. yeah, and the big ones. Yeah. yeah, the mm-hmm. big ones. Okay. Yeah. Stephanie Sun, Kitchen, okay. mm-hmm. and shout out to our local singers. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I also listen to a lot of musical theatre. Okay, because I love musicals. I love watching musicals, mm-hmm. and oh, uh, I guess when. I got older and I got my own phone and my own like streaming accounts. I started listening to more pop. Okay. How old were you when you? What was this? Spotify? Apple Music? YouTube? Uh, Apple Music. Apple Music. My family got the, the family, the family package. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, how old were you again when you, when you? Probably like late primary school. Late primary yeah. school. So that's when you started to search for things on your own rather than what your mm, parents were feeding mm. you. 
So what were the things that, that, that had the most impact on you? What were some of the artists that you were heavily into back then? Back then, I think it was all over the place. I remember listening to Rather Be by, well, who was it by? I cannot remember. And some Taylor Swift, maybe. Early Taylor Swift. Early Taylor mm. Swift, yeah. And then when I entered secondary school, I started listening to more R&B. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And What were some of your favorite R&B singers? Ooh, I love... I love Alicia Keys. Okay. Um, we could hear that in your voice, <laughs> a bit of Alicia Keys. Oh, thank you. Um, I also listen to a lot of Whitney Houston, mm-hmm. um, Eloise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really depends on my mood. Right. Okay. So at which point did you realize that, you know, music was more than just a mere hobby to you, that there was something you wanted to do seriously? Obviously, at one point you thought, okay, I want to go to Sota instead of... Ooh. Doing something else, you know. Like. Okay, so funny story. I actually went to Sota because I thought the escalator was very cool. Wow. <laughs> I okay. At orientation, I saw the escalator. I was like, wow, I want to go to a school with this long escalator in it. But surely you knew what Sota was all about. Right? Yeah. It was not just about the, like the cool yeah. stairs. Like. I mean, Sota also did a lot of academics. So I mm. knew that going to Sota, even if music didn't work out, I mm. would I could still do something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think I started taking music more seriously when I started putting out my own songs. Okay. Yeah. So that was two years ago. Yeah. It's yeah, very we, recent, right? Yeah. Which was after you went to Sota? With the, you it was during my Sota. last year. Last year in Sota. Yeah. When you started putting out songs. Yeah. And what was the motivation behind that? Like, did somebody push you to do it or was it entirely on your own? I've always wanted to put out my own stuff Mm. and when because earlier on like a year before that maybe my friend Regina not sure if you know her Regina Regina song song? yeah Mm -hmm. she also produced a song and you guys are under PK records as well uh, together Regina's under Parka Parka okay yeah but she put out her first song with PK all right yeah because Daniel the the guy I mentioned earlier Mm. he was part of PK okay and and yeah, I was like, whoa, it's actually possible to put out a song. Like, before that, it was always like, oh, I want to put out a song, but I don't know how. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I have all these songs in my notes app. And then she put out a song, and I was like, whoa, you know what? I'm going to do that too. Mm-hmm. So I approached PK. You knew the people from PK Records? or uh, Daniel, he's my boyfriend now. Ah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, I see. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he's um like the... The arranger mm-hmm. at PK. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Could I can I do a song with y'all? And then they were like, sure. I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. And that was this was back in 2022, like two years ago. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And you were telling me before before you came on that you're currently in an SMU right now, which yeah. is like very different from what Sota was. So what happened there after you finished <laughs> Sota? You decided to go to SMU instead? Um, after I finished, finished SOTA, I actually didn't know what I wanted to do. So you didn't want to go to further your music studies um, overseas? or? Um, I wanted to. I did think about it. But the thing is, I missed all the application deadlines. Because oh. that year, I was like focusing on IB. And during all the career guidance talks, right. I remember they were like 7 a.m. Like I wasn't listening. So that was on me. That was on me. But right. <laughs> yeah, I did think of taking a gap year, but mm-hmm. my parents said no. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to apply to some local schools. Okay. For the lols. <laughs> for the lols. <laughs> uh, and so SMU, they have this new school called CIS, College of Integrative Studies. Mm-hmm. And you can design your own major there. And going to CIS actually gave me the opportunity to kind of procrastinate deciding on what I wanted to study mm-hmm. for a year. So I decided to just go there in the end. Right. Yeah. Is becoming a full-time artist part of your plans? Um, that would be ideal. Mm-hmm. But also it can be quite hard. Like I think not just in Singapore, like no matter where you are from, mm-hmm. 
it's quite hard to just rely on music full time. Right. And especially in Singapore, like if you think ahead and you wanna and you're thinking like VTO, things like that. Mm. Yeah. I think you'll need quite a bit of money to do that and it's a bit hard to earn from just music. Okay. Do you interact a lot with your audiences, you know, whether on TikTok or Instagram or any of your socials? Interacting with listeners. I think I mostly interact with my listeners through the comment sections mm -hmm. on TikTok and Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe at gigs. So I'll meet some of my listeners there. Okay. And it's always so nice to see people who are actually listening to your stuff. Like, it's so incredible. Like, when I was writing my music, I didn't think that there would be so many people listening. But, yeah, it's always nice to meet people who listen to my music. Right, right. And you recently put out a new song, Quiet. Right. Yes. Tell us about, about that song. Um, Quiet. Um, my process for writing this song was... A bit chunky again. <laughs> no, all chunky. So this one was a bit different because the hook for the chorus, the da 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 da, it came to me in a dream. A dream. Yeah. So I was. And you woke up and you remembered it. No, no, no. I was sleeping, and then I wrote this. I always write songs in my dreams, but usually I can't remember them. But this time, like when I was dreaming and I was writing a song, I was like, you know what? This is nice. I think I want to put this out. Then, and then I realized, oh wait, I'm dreaming. <laughs> like, usually I don't realize, but this time I realized, I don't know why. Then I woke up, then I typed into my notes, and then I fell right back asleep. Yeah. Then I woke up again, I was like, oh yeah, I woke up and I wrote down something. Then I started working on that song. The lyrics or the melody or, or both? Um, It was, okay, so at first that line was, was, I want you so bad in my dream, but then I changed it to, I want you that way in... In, when I was writing it in real life because right. it fit better with okay. the rest of the lyrics. Is it based on a real person or real thing that happened to you? Or um, are you the kind of person who writes like you know, a Taylor Swift style where <laughs> all these are real things that happen to you or yeah. do you make them up? I think it's quite hard for me to write about things that didn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. Like things that I cannot personally okay. relate to yeah. or... At the very least, it must have happened to someone whom I'm close to, mm. who's told me about like what their experience was like. Um, for quiet, it's about the feeling when of pining for someone who is pining for someone else. Oh, yeah. Okay. So complicated. Yeah. Sadly, this was based on like <laughs> a couple of experiences that I've mm. had. Okay. Yeah. Right. So you've put out about, sang I think, seven singles so far in the last two years, including some of the live ones. Some yeah, of the, uh, I think know. around there. Is that your plan, you know, to drop occasional singles or do you have an EP or album coming up, like a longer form of work? I do have an EP coming out. Okay. So we're working on it right now. Would it be like the previous singles that you put out or would it, like, would it be like a batch of fresh new songs? Um... There'll be mostly new songs. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Really is, excited for that. Do you have a concept? Like, uh, is there a theme running through the songs? Um, I actually haven't really decided on that yet. But I did have an idea when I was, like, curating the list of songs I went inside. Mm -hmm. So they're all going to be love songs for this one. Mm -hmm. But they're going to alternate between sad and happy songs, sad okay. and happy themes. Mm -hmm. Just like real life. Yeah. And how far along are you? Uh, when can we expect this to be out? Um, hopefully by the end of this year or mm. early next year. Yeah. Right, right. In the last two years, since you first you put out the first song, right? And today after you release really Quiet, how have you seen yourself grown um, as an artist? How have, have you seen your music progressed? Maybe if you're looking at like numbers if you're looking at the number of listeners mm -hmm. I've definitely grown. it's been steadily growing right? yeah yeah um what's your average monthly listeners right now on streaming services right now it's on Spotify it's around 60 something thousand mm -hmm. I think yeah 
And when you release a song, like, like you know, like your friends, your family, they will all like post it in their stories yeah. and tag you. Then you can like repost it. Mm. So when I first released Melt, my first single, your first single in twenty twenty two, I had a lot of my schoolmates, right. my friends, my mom, my dad, yeah. <laughs> like my sister, all, ju- all just reposting it. Mm-hmm. And it was very, very on the ground, very DIY kind of marketing. For marketing, uh, I guess it was like. I did post it on TikTok. It probably, I don't know how many people it reached. But yeah, the marketing was mostly on my Instagram page where the people I knew were following me. Right. Yeah. And when I released Quiet, like the people who were reposting my song, um, although a lot of them are like my friends, like there's a portion of them that I do not know personally. And I think it's so sweet that people are like reposting my music. Is is that and, how it's fine got over a million streams, you know? Or, or was it on, on some playlist somewhere? Uh for it's fine because of the TikTok I think. So oh, right. there were like some people who Because you already for built it. up the excitement on TikTok. Yeah. And from TikTok they went to Spotify to look for yeah. the full version of it's fine. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Let's talk about live shows. Uh, when did you have your first public performance? As an artist or like in my life? In your life? In my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure if this was the first, but my mom, she organized like family concerts. Oh yeah? Yeah, okay. I remember it was like at the arts house. So like, Family concerts? What, yeah, what does that mean? Like, the audience were all family members or? Uh, actually, I have no idea. <laughs> I was like really young. <laughs> Uh, so she just pulled you up as one of the artists <laughs> yeah it was like cause my dad sings mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then my sister sings yeah and then we just like perform like hee hee ha ha yeah I remember those those are some of my very fond memories it was very fun I remember like running up and down the staircase arts house. at the arts house <laughs> yeah and I remember it smelled very nice who were in the audience do you remember who Probably my parents' friends. Okay. Yeah. So it was very familiar faces to you. You were nervous about, about singing to other people. Oh my gosh. I Wow, well, when I was young, my skin was so sick. So like, I don't think <laughs> it mattered who was in the audience. I would just go in front and I would like, start like shaking my butt. Oh my God, I remember. <laughs> a, a, a child's confidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about so, right now? <laughs> uh, I don't think I'll start shaking my butt anytime okay. soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think it fits my songs either. But Probably not. <laughs> yeah. So how about when you first started out putting on your own songs, when when was the first public performance of of your first original song? It was at, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it was this place that sold ice cream. Hmm? Yeah, An it ice was cream bar? Like a cafe? A cafe, mm-hmm. yeah. It was organised by Fruits. Like, where are the fruits? Where are the fruits? Okay. Yeah, okay. and mm-hmm. the they featured, company. like, some of the artists because I was part of the vo- the Voices Mentorship Program that they held that year. Ah, yeah. okay. When was this? This was... This was before COVID? After? After COVID. This was mm. 2022. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that was the first one where... First performance where I performed as Ryu. Right. Yeah. And... Playing original tunes. Yeah. Okay. And you recently did some shows at the Esplanade, correct? Mm. Mm-hmm. I had a uh, the indoor the indoor stage. I forgot what it's called. The concourse. Yeah, the concourse. Mm-hmm. Okay. How did that go? It was really fun. Mm-hmm. I played with Ian. He was mm-hmm. playing the guitar, and it was. I don't usually play my songs with a guitar. It was. It's usually with the keys. Mm-hmm. So this was different. It was. It sounded fresh. Yeah, sometimes you gotta like change change it up mm. so you don't get tired of your own songs. Okay. How many shows have you done so far um, as a solo artist? Shows that where you play your original songs? I'm not very sure. Mm-hmm. Maybe around 10. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any plans to play outside of Singapore to build up your audience or, or to play to... The people who are listening to you from outside of Singapore? I would love to. Um, I haven't had the time to 
do a lot of music because of school. Mm -hmm. But maybe when my EP is released, maybe I'll do like a little tour. Of where? Do you have any places in mind? Maybe um, around Southeast Asia. Okay. Yeah. All right. I understand that you're also part of uh, the Singapore Music Collective, the New Mongrels, mm -hmm. which also includes other young homegrown artists. Can you talk about that and you know how your involvement with New Mongrels has helped you as as a budding young artist? Um, New Mongrels started by Matt and Shaz. Um, it feels like a community. Kind of. So if I need any help, I could like reach out to the people there. Mm. Yeah. And they also helped me with music distro. Distribution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So you've got quite a community backing you up Yeah. as an artist. Not just your record label, but this music collective, New Mongrels as well. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay. All right. What are the projects are you working on right now besides the EP? You know, what are your plans uh, for the rest of the year? Um, from the EP, I'm releasing. I'm planning on releasing maybe one or two songs from the EP as singles as before pre, pre EP singles. Yeah, mm -hmm. before okay. the entire EP is released, I'm also working on some collaborations. Okay, with yeah. Who? Um, I have a collaboration with. Daniel, he's going to start releasing, he's going to release his own album. His and, own solo works. Yeah, okay. and he's collaborating with a lot of local artists. Mm -hmm. And I also have another collab with Regina. Regina's out. song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Regina and I, we like, we have a lot of songs that we've written together because okay. um, we would like sit in the SOTA practice rooms and like just write. Right. Ryu, just one last question for you. Uh, it's a question that we ask all our interviewees. Where do you see yourself in five to ten years? Ooh. Well, hopefully, hopefully I will have graduated from, graduated from? uni. Okay. Uh, let me think. I hope to have had by then a larger audience. Mm -hmm. And I hope to play for all of them. I, I want to fly overseas mm -hmm. and play for all my listeners and meet all of them. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to do that in five years. All right, Ryu, thank you so much and we wish you all the best and we'll be keeping a lookout on your music career. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe and share and don't forget to hit the bell icon.